We're following fleeces from the New Zealand Agricultural Show, Canterbury Shears, Corridale Shearing and Wool Handling Championships. And our journey takes us to the PGG Rights and Wool Store in Christchurch, where the wool buyers are ready to do battle at auction. Helen Cameron may be the only female buyer and exporter here today, but her experienced eye knows exactly what kind of quality her Italian customers are expecting. So what we're looking for is the what we think the wool will do when it's processed and how the wool looks, the style, the colour and uh, just perhaps the crimp definition. We also check to the tensile strength ourselves. Even though we have often have these measurements anyway, we'll still ensure that what's on the piece of paper is actually what's in the sample box. Does this impact your decision making up in the room after? Absolutely. I really want to come and see how the guys have sorted the wall in the shed. Um, this is really important and um, it's a big part of we do the growing but it's got to be presented properly. Yeah, they, they did a really good job. This, this wall you can see it's nice and even. There's no dags if you like. That would be the worst thing or, or coloured wall in there. Um, there's a little bit there. That's just a little bit. We'll put that over there where it belongs. Um, but that's, that's nothing. Uh, they've done a great job. Boys and girls. <laughs> and there's tension in the air as Helen and the other buyers prepare to go head to head in the auction room. The last of the season's fine merino wool clip, along with cross-breed fleeces, are up for grabs today. It has been the most volatile period in a generation for wool prices, with the COVID-19 pandemic contributing to the nervousness. So news of an extraordinary spike in Australian wool prices is on everyone's mind. The mark has been Unbelievable. The last couple of weeks it's gone up one, two dollars and then all of a sudden overnight everyone's a bit nervous. It stabilised a wee bit yesterday. A lot of that was dominated by the Chinese market. Uh, so it will be interesting to see how today goes. We have a, you know, good relationships personally, but at the end of the day commercially we've got a job to do and it's, it's there about making a quid and, and carrying on the company and the business. It's fast moving. If you hesitate or you're slow bidding, then you'll miss a lot and you don't get a second chance. So I'm Doug Mackay, I'm the uh, head auctioneer for PGG Rights in here. I've just um, about to complete close to 30 years with the company and I've been auctioneering now for close on 20 years, so. You know, once you're in the auction room, it's gloves off. Yeah, it's, it's game on, yeah. it's game on. Lot one. 700 cents, 700, 700 with Maserol, 700 cents, 701. With an open cry auction, um, you know, we, we're not keyboard warriors sitting in a desk somewhere and, and, and you can't see what, you, what the opposition's doing. In an open cry auction like we have in that room, they're eyeballing the guy on the other side of the room and they're looking at him saying, how much more has he got? Because I just missed that last line of and I want that next one. And so things can move pretty quickly. 1170, 1170's with AME. 90, 96, 97, 98, 99. I mean, I've been sitting in the auction now for 35 years, so I've got a bit of an ability to, to use the voice and you know get loud, get stroppy if I need to. And it wasn't long before Steve put that voice of his to good use. 399, 399, 399, 399, There's a lot at stake for farmer Daryl Harris watching on from the viewing room. It could be a good or bad payday, depending not only on the quality of his flock and the skill of the shearers, 
but also something out of his control, the volatile market. 130 when prices are low, that's not a good thing for the industry at all. And it's important that the farmers are paid an appropriate you know, market price, a market value on the day. Uh, because if the farmers can't make it affordable, then obviously they don't stay in the business. 81. And it is very much a story of providence at the moment. It's about traceability. And that has become paramount as far as our clients are concerned as well. We produce some really good processing walls that perform really well and give our clients the requirements that they need. It's a good day for the farmers, and for the buyers, a good day to keep your sense of humour. <laughs> sold to GM, 454 sold. 1350. 1355. 1400. 1400. What have we got to? 1499. Go 1500. Okay, I will. 1500. 700. 705. 705. 10. 15. 15 Schneider. 25. 65. 30. 30. 5. 14. 5. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. Uh, when we had to get in and buy, we were probably the number three buyer in the room today. Bought just just on 1,100 bales of wool. Somewhat governed by the the dollar, but unfortunately, when there's a lack of wool at this time of the year, particularly the crossbreds, there's big ranges of colours, length, micron, you name it. There's a big range of it, and as a result of being a big range, it's just small amounts of any one type. So when it came to buying it, there was serious pressure on in the room. You know, you've got two, you got two sides here. You've got the auctioneer that's trying to extract the last dollar for, for his customer. And, you know, we're trying to get it at the cheapest possible price that we can at the same time. Perhaps a little hoarse and probably spending more than they would have liked, it was, overall, a good day for New Zealand wool. The market went as we would expect today. Yeah, um, it was well up on previous auction here, but probably not as expensive as Australia. Regardless of what the location of sale is, there's a global price for wool. Yeah. We sold over 500 lots today. 88 services I've got, 88 cents. Services sold. Over the page we go. Today was a fairly big day for us. Our marketers have done a great job. It's down on a few years ago, but um, with all the global events happening at the moment, on most of the wool on valuation, we got a dollar fifty two dollars a kilogram more. So I think I'll be having a nice cup of coffee on the way home. <laughs> Not a lot of people um, really appreciate the full benefits of wool and, and what it's really like. It all sounds good and with all these synthetics and you know two or three wear and then it goes into the rubbish bin. But when you're getting a quality product like wool, it doesn't like that. I've, I love getting out of bed going to work because I mean, the wool industry is just bloody amazing. Like it's taken me all around the world, enabling me to have you know, a cup of tea with Prince Charles in his backyard because he's the patron of the campaign for wool. Wool's natural quality and natural inflammability makes it like royalty when it comes to fibre. So, so wool, it'll singe, a bit like burnt, you know, your hair. Um, your hair sort of singes and you have that smell, but you, you just rub it and it's good as gold. And the same 13 buyers who have done battle in this room for more than 20 years will share a yarn or two as friends and colleagues, passionate about an industry with such rich heritage in our country. Mm -hmm.